Everybody, a bit of a different arrangement this week so this is a, an immediate follow-up to part 41 where we're going to finish these turrets off uh, as I explained in the previous uh, part I had too much footage to be able to fit everything into the one video but rather than cut anything out uh, that I thought was important uh, I've decided to split them up into uh, two parts this week so we can move on now and get the rest of these turrets built and we'll get them finished in this particular video. Okay, so we need to prep the parts now for the UP mounting that sits on top of B turret. So I'll get off the Prontos parts that we want. And we've got a broken railing. We actually need trumpets apart B7 for this, which is the uh, main enclosure or splinter shield around the UP mount. It's not the right shape, but Pontos give us some corrections to get the right shape. It's got two wings that stand up uh, either side. Uh, but the first thing we need to do is get rid of the plastic base. We just need the actual enclosure. I think the bottom part of this will need to be removed just so that it sits uh, flush. Otherwise I think it'll be too tall. This is a part that it would be good to have in resin. It'd be a lot more straightforward. Uh, and especially if the wings at the side were cast integrally with it. So after quite a lot of sanding, that's ready. Uh, it needs the wings fitting yet, I'll come back to that. But it fits nice and flush on the Pontos brass part. So the next job is to put these uh, wings on. So that's these raised sections and obviously they're going to need to be curved to uh, match the curvature of the enclosure. So I'm just going to anneal that part just to help us bend that a bit more easily. So these are the side pieces or the extensions to the splinter shield and I've just annealed them and bent them using the plastic part as a guide to how much to bend the part just to get the right sort of curve on it and I'll use some medium super glue on that just to uh, fix it to the top of the plastic shield. These do need quite a bit of cleaning up. And I'll probably need to use some filler on it as well. Just to get a nice smooth uh, transition. That's the first shield rough, very roughly into position. And as you can see, it's going to need quite a bit of clean up and uh, a lot of smoothing in. We'll fit the other side now. 
and what we're looking for here is just to make sure that they oppose each other I'll just set that up with a bit of accelerator And then this will need repeated applications of uh, Mr. Surface or I use for these sort of things. Uh, and we will need to, we will need more than one coat on this to fill these gaps and to blend this part in. We have the same procedure on the splinter shields for the uh, UP mountings uh, on the shelter deck because Trumpeter had got those wrong as well. It did take quite a bit of time to get the result that I wanted but it is worth it to blend these in. They don't look right if you just stick the brass on. So that needs to dry thoroughly before we can start sanding it. In the meantime I'll fold these railings up I'll just fix that railing to the side. These railings do a lot better soldered when it's all brass like this. You can glue them of course but the fixing is much better soldered. And this is the railing that I've broken on mine. That's the top half of the platform. And this is the bottom half. And this has a number of folds on it. So the, there's a little lip at the front here. And then the sides also bend down through 90 degrees. And this gives us the shape of the bracket that fits to the top of the range finder. So uh, it fits like that. As you can see the shape of that end bracket really helps us to get that located properly. But we've also got some other brackets to fit on the underside. There are six. These brackets are all slightly different just to accommodate the different uh, levels on the rangefinder. I'm just going to give that a squirt of uh, primer. Uh, it'll just set those brackets in place. 
and it'll just give us some paint coverage because once this is fitted it'll be pretty difficult to get paint underneath it. Now that this Mr Surface has dried a little bit I can go back in and do the first clean up. It'll probably take three or four attempts to get this nice and smooth. Okay, so we've had another couple of coats of the Mr. Surfacer on the uh, splinter shield. And it's getting there, it just needs another couple maybe just to make it perfect. Uh, in the meantime, I'll fit this platform now. So that's all dried up. I've put the central brace in position. This attaches to the rangefinder just outboard of these ribs here. So just a small amount of medium CA will hold this, I think. I'm only going to glue it on the outer rib. I'm not going to bother gluing the inside ribs. I might just go in on the inside face there and just give it some of the thin super glue and that'll just make sure that it's perfectly solid. The top of the platform can go on now. I hadn't realised actually that this has got a little bit of a bend in it. Not by much, but it's just got a little rise and fall on it which is why we've got this dotted line in the middle, it just helps to fold the part. Right, so I'll glue the platform in place now. Just a couple of dots of this gel glue. And just have to be careful here to get this aligned properly. So with the top part of the platform in position, uh, I'll fit the ammunition boxes. These are ready use lockers, which is these parts here. It's uh, trumpeter part F12, just with a couple of brass facings on them. So uh, the actual splinter shield or emplacement, I don't know what we want to call it really. That's come out okay now. The last coat of the Mr. Surfacer has worked okay. Right, so this has had four coats of Mr. Surfacer now and it's probably as good as I'm going to get it. I think under a coat of paint it'll look all right. So there's one or two details to add to this. I'm going to try and fit these steps which go up the side of the splinter shield. There are three on either side. And Trumpeter give us this little template 
to use to locate the to locate these steps although holding the template hard enough I don't think that's going to work I don't think that template's going to work so what I'm going to do is just put three holes or three pin marks in the shield and obviously try and space them out equally so I'm not going to try and make the hole for the other side of the ladder or step I just want to be able to position one side and glue one side actually into those holes and I'm hoping that that will just give us enough of a contact uh, to hold those steps in place but before we do that was uh, there's a this base to fit it has some positioning marks in it for some braces on the inside of the shield so I want to this these marks here around the outside are the position of the brackets for the inside of the splinter shield and I've just been careful there to position them uh, in the correct place for where we're going to want those braces so there are two fairly tall braces which run up this uh, extension on the shield that we've just done so you just got to be careful to get that in the right position I've painted the I've just undercoated this just to check that uh, it looks okay uh, I've fitted the braces to the inside using the base plate as uh, an aid to positioning those just so that they're nice and even all the way around uh, and I've also fitted these uh, ladder rungs using uh, the little holes the pin holes that I made just to one side I've not glued both ends of those legs together and when I've cut these parts off the fret you see the last one to go on here I've cut them unequally so I've left uh, one side of the leg which goes into the hole a bit longer than the other and that just avoids us having to get the two holes if we were going to use the template uh, in a straight line it's easy enough to get one set of holes in a straight line but to try and get two rows uh, is another matter So uh, you can see the, how much easier that is to do. So that's come out okay. I can fix that now to the top of the turret or to the platform that we've got here. And I'll use some gel glue for that. The important thing with this is to get it uh, so that the side wings 
are properly positioned or equally positioned. And then finally, we can fit the UP. I made this uh, way back. I made all five together, so that's handy because I can now uh, just go ahead and fit this in. I have had to trim the bottom uh, pedestal a little bit. It was a bit too deep because I've taken the bottom off the uh, because I've taken the bottom off this part, this plastic part, uh, it's meant that the pin on the UP mount was just a bit too long. So that's come out okay. The last thing before fitting the barrels is to do the ladders. We have three styles of ladders. Uh, this one is present on all four turrets uh, and it just accessed the turret from the back. The B turret with the UP mounting on had this ladder which ran up the front of the turret uh, between the two barrels and the X turret had an additional ladder which went up one of the forward faces uh, about here. So these just need to be bent as we have done before with these, so I'm not going to do them all again on camera. They just uh, fold the sides down, which gives a bit of relief to the part. They don't just stick directly onto the superstructure as the trumpeter ladders do. To get a bit of glue on those at either end. The last one to fit is this for the B turret and it's unique there's only this one on the ship. Okay, so that's all done except for the barrels. So just as I did with the blast bags, I'm going to use some five minute epoxy for the barrels.
going to have to do these one at a time just to make sure that I get them lined up properly. It's too much to be juggling uh, eight barrels and keeping them all lined up. It's like spinning plates. So uh, it's a bit of a waste of the epoxy, but this is the right way to do it and make sure that each one is just right before we do the next one. You can feel the epoxy going off already. Uh, they're starting to, the barrels are starting to stiffen up a little bit. So it's just a patience game. So I'm starting to fit the barrels now. I've already done the A turret here. And I've tried some five minute epoxy and that didn't really work. It was far too, uh, these barrels are too heavy and trying to get them set up properly was pretty difficult. Uh, so these are actually done with uh, medium CA super glue. And I'm a bit concerned about just relying on super glue. It's not the strongest of uh, bonds. But I think what I might try to do uh, for the next ones is to use a combination of epoxy and CA. So I get the instant grab of the CA and the long-term strength of the epoxy. So I can put some epoxy right down at the bottom of the blast bag and some CA at the front uh, and hopefully I'll get the best of both worlds by doing that. So I'll give that a try on this Y turret. One of the other issues that I've come across is that the actual pins on the barrels are a bit too long for the blast bag holes. So they don't quite fit in. So there's two things we can do. Either drill the blast bag out or trim a little bit off the pin. And I think the best thing to do is to drill the blast bag out a little bit because we need as much support as we can get for these. I'll just get some CA on the front face of the barrel where it joins the blast bag. So obviously the key thing here is to get the barrels lined up so both side to side and pointing in a straight line fore and aft and I can use the grid here on the cutting mat just to uh, make sure that they are lined up properly so hopefully that's going to work, that combination of epoxy and super glue. So I'll do that for the other two turrets. Okay, so we've got the four turrets primed. So A, B, X and Y. And I've primed them in the main. I've primed them in Tamiya's uh, Extra Fine Primer. Uh, the only exception to that is the barrels where I painted the barrels or I've primed the barrels in the etching primer. On the A turret, which is this one, uh, photographs appear to show a round glove of some form on the top surface of the turret. And it's thought that that was an air recognition marking. 
it was certainly there in 1941 the photographs of the ship in the Denmark Strait in May 1941 uh, clearly show uh, a roundel uh, on the top of a turret uh, the confusion comes from understanding the exact colours of that roundel uh, the bottom line I suppose is that no one knows for certain but it's certainly two tone uh, and the belief is the common belief at any rate is that it was some form uh, of roundel similar to a B type roundel uh, in the RAF blue and red so uh, I'll have to cut some round masks out for this uh, and get that painted up I'll be using some very muted uh, blues and a brick red colour uh, I don't want it to appear too stark so uh, I'll cut the mass out and we'll give that a go okay so underneath this is a turret uh, I've cut out using a circle cutter the outside of the uh, roundel and I've just painted the uh, centre red in a very dull red I used some of the lacquer uh, whole red actually toned down with a bit of grey and now I've mixed up uh, a blue to go around I've just cut the centre circle out and put it in the middle that just helps us get the roundel perfectly uh, even all the way around it's easier doing it like that I think so I'll go over and get the blue I've mixed some blue up again using uh, some field blue and some pure blue so it's a bit of a toned down blue which I hope will come out okay on this so I'll get over and get that painted now all right so that's the blue on so I'll just unmask it and just see how that looks It's a pretty dull colour really, which is what I was after. It's nice and subdued it's not uh, it's not too much at all so that's come out okay right we'll do the uh, blast bags now so I've mixed up uh, a little bit of LP 15 which is one of the greys and I've just put a tiny amount of uh, deck tan in it So it just gives ever such a slight variation in the tone. And being a lacquer paint, it's uh, very easy to brush paint. It goes on really nicely. So the object with this colour is just to uh, keep it pretty close to the whole colour but just to suggest that it's actually of a different material to the steel so obviously these were some form of canvas so the bit of deck tan in the mix just uh, probably I'm hoping suggests that there is some canvas in there it might not be possible to see that 
we'll just let those dry and see what sort of shade they come out but I think they'll be fine you'll see a lot of photographs and a lot of models for that matter of the ship with white blast bags or a very pale colour at any rate but for wartime they weren't white they were a much darker colour they look just like the hull really which I'm trying to replicate with this shade so if you're doing a wartime version of the ship just resist the temptation to paint them white the last thing I'm doing now is just picking out the ends of the muzzles uh, with a bit of matte aluminium I don't want anything too blingy on them so the matte aluminium is just the right sort of finish that I'm after Okay, all done. The blast bags are a bit glossy at the minute, but it will uh, tone down after a while. Uh, but uh, they've come out really nice. I'm happy with those. So that's the A turret. The B has the UP mounting on top, of course. and the C with the flying off platform fitted to it, or the remnants of it at any rate. So we'll go over to the ship, let's put those on and see what they look like. Okay, so let's get these turrets on. This isn't going to be the longest end sequence I've ever done. And the after turrets. It's nice to get those holes covered up. There was always a risk of dropping a part down there. And if I had done that, they would be pretty unrecoverable. Okay, so that's it all done. I'll get some wide photographs of that uh, and some detailed photographs as well. Okay, so there she is looking like a warship at last. Uh, those turrets have come out really nice. I'm very pleased with those. So that's it. We've uh, had a lot of footage this week. I've taken almost 10 hours uh, of footage doing these uh, four turrets this week. Uh, and I couldn't possibly fit all those into the one video. So that's why uh, I've split the videos up this week into a part A and part B. So I hope that's worked okay for everybody. 
I didn't want to cut any of the information out really. I found it really difficult to decide what to take out of the editing. Uh, and in the end, I just thought having the part A and part B was uh, the best way to go to give you the most information without making the videos too long. So that's it for this one. Uh, next week, I'm going to be moving on and doing the spotting top, which is this. It's been standing around on this shelf for quite a while. The spotting top sits on top of the foremast here and it's the last uh, main structure actually to be done on the model. Uh, after this we've only got the masts to do and a start on the rigging. So that'll be coming up uh, next week, uh, Friday as usual and I promise it'll just be in one video. I'll try to get it all in the sort of 45-50 minute time frame uh, of the usual Friday night videos. In the meantime, have a great week everybody. Enjoy your modelling if that's what you're doing. Uh, and I'll see you in another seven days. So bye for now.